want to welcome all of His Glory Nation from east to west to north to south as we bring you the latest teaching in the book of Revelation. Tonight we will be in Revelation 17. We're trying to go live on three platforms uh, because some of our platforms Satan is trying to knock out and uh, it's causing havoc. We tried to go live on, uh, on uh, YouTube, but YouTube is not uh, allowing us to go live right now. So we'll, we'll pick this up on on uh, Facebook and on Twitter and Periscope. So we are getting into the book of Revelation, Revelation 17, the revelation of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. We're getting deeper into the latter days. We're gonna see in this chapter, the woman who rides the beast and we'll explain who the woman is riding the beast. Um, before we go any further, as we always do, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down to be our true teacher in the living word of God, which is our savior, Christ the Lord. Um, Let's see if we can get them to go live again in okay, well, we're just not going to be able to pick up on YouTube. We'll have to upload from uh, one of our other platforms to YouTube. Okay, so we're going to get into the the woman who rides the beast, and uh, that's uh, revelation seventeen. We'll go into depth of what this means. Again, the symbols are every symbol is de uh, described throughout the scripture. So nothing that we're about to see is going to confuse us. If we're, if we're uh, reading the entire totality of God's word, all 66 books, and as we mentioned before, there is a heresy going through the church today that, that you do not read the Old Testament, do not read the Torah. Uh, replacement theology, uh, it's just, it's blasphemy. God wants to, us to know all 66 books because the Old Testament has the New Testament concealed and the, Old, the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. All together, as Isaiah said, line upon line, precept upon pre precept, here a little, there a little. If you know the Old Testament and you know the Torah and all the books of the Old Testament, the book of Revelation is going to make perfect sense to you because the symbols are explained throughout the scripture. So there's nothing confusing here. There are some scholars that will you know, uh, go back and forth about what nations are, are, are being talked about. Uh, we'll give you the nations and uh, the speculation on, on a different nation is just speculation. It doesn't matter. The point is, a nation is going to come in and fill this void. And we got to go back to what Daniel said as well. And uh, all these will be a conglomerate at the end of trying to revive all these nations that have fallen that uh, John is being shown here. So, okay, let's get into it. Uh, let the scripture... Then once one of the seven angels had seven bowls came and talked with me. So one of the angels that had the seven bowls of the wrath of God is coming and talked to John. And he's saying to him, come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. Okay, so this is the woman who rides the beast. This is the woman who rides the scarlet beast. We'll explain who she is as a symbol and how it could literally be a woman and where the city that she represents is and was and will be until the end, and that's Babylon. The woman who rides the beast is the spirit of Jezebel, same as Jezebel that was a literal woman but rode the, the spirit of a, a witchcraft from Satan in uh, the book of Kings. And uh, if you haven't read Jonathan Kahn's uh, Paradigm, it's an absolute fabulous book. I won't go into detail, but read the Paradigm uh, from Jonathan Kahn. He talks about how uh, ancient Israel is, is is matching up to the United States of America today with a modern with a with a modern day Jezebel. I won't tell you who it is. You can do that for yourself. And how Trump is a Ju, and it's quite amazing to see this uh, play out. So the woman who rides the beast, she is uh, that great harlot, the great harlot that represents the world and its filth, its fornication, everything that God stands for, she is going against. She is the spirit of Jezebel. She is the spirit of commerce. She is the spirit of the seven heads of society of me, 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 commerce, silver, gold, money, greed, power, and everything in sexual deviation. You ever wonder why you see so much sexual stuff going on in society, whether it's fornication, whether it's adultery, whether it's uh, um, uh, bestiality? We had uh, a university professor just had bestiality with a dog. It's just, it's, we're definitely in the days of Lot. We're in the days of, of, of Noah, as Christ said we would be. 
Satan used sexual perversion to just to pervert us and take our eyes off it. And that's why she's called the great harlot. That's why she sold herself. God has always, from the beginning of time, said, you shall come one man, one woman married together in unison with God in the middle. That was what he always wanted. He wanted to be married to, to Israel. That's why he always talks about Israel in the Old Testament as, as in the city of Jerusalem as his bride. Christ is the head of the church, he is the bridegroom, and the church is the bride. It's always a holy matrimony in, in doing things the way God wants us to do them in his love and his precepts and commandments. Where Satan is taking the opposite and trying to pervert that for his ugliness, and it's gonna be justice is gonna be served on that great harlot who's been getting away with this from century to century, but the time of, of God's wrath is upon him. Justice and the scales of justice are going to be done here. With, the, with the whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. They got drunk outside of their intelligence, reasoning, and judgment because they chased everything of the world. They chased greed. They chased power. They chased money. Whatever it took in fornication, sexual perversion, child, ch child's uh, sexual perversion. That's another pedophile ring is going to be coming out real, real soon. That's why Satan has attacked the church from within. And a lot of these scandals God is taking to the church, the fake church. We see today that the U.S. Presbyterian Church has gone against the nation of Israel and said that Israel shouldn't be in the land and the land should be to the Palestinians. Another heresy. They, and they, again, the reason why they do these kind of nonsense and, and, and totally against God's word, they don't read the Old Testament. That is an Abrahamic covenant forever. Gabriel tells Mary in Luke that the, the, that Jesus Christ will rule over the house of Israel forever, all of it. And we have to stand up to these fake churches and say, no, 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 you don't go against God's beloved. Our King of Kings, Lord of hosts, it will be, st will be in Jerusalem. And we see in the Ezekiel 40 through 48, where the 12 tribes of Israel and their land will be, it will be expanded in the millennial reign. When God says it, he means it, he means what he says. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. So he's taken into, into the wilderness to see what this great harlot's going to do of the end days. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast and which was full of names of blasphemy and the seven heads of 10 horns, the names of blasphemy. What would that be? I, the, the, they're of other gods. All the gods of the universe is the blame of blasphemy because there's only one God through his son, Jesus Christ. It is the God of the Hebrew. In the Hebrew was Elohim, which grammatically means three. In the, in, the, in the Greek, Theos, which means three. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So she is the scarlet. Scarlet is one of the, the uh, colors of the Lord uh, that was used in the, in the tabernacle. That's why Satan is using scarlet and purple, because these were signs of royalty. And she's taking on her own royalty for herself and the world instead of the most high God. And she literally goes down and blaspheming the name of the Lord with, with false gods on her. Just the same way Jezebel did in the book of Kings. Jezebel went until there was a Jehu who came riding a hop on a horse, fierce. And uh, God's purpose and his plan came up to fruition exactly the way he said it would. So seven heads and 10 horns. We said before seven heads represent seven governments. Ten horns uh, represents, ten is, ten is the number of precepts and commandments. These are authority. Uh, so you, you will see the seven heads being seven literal nations, and then ten horns will be of authority, and the angel will explain it more in detail. We'll go to the seven, uh, the, the seven nations of history uh, and uh, how they all come together in the latter days, as Daniel says, and Christ will come back and it will all be destroyed. Uh, the woman who arrayed in purple and scarlet, again, trying to mock God, trying to mock God in his holy temple with purple and scarlet, adorned in gold and precious stones as she is some kind of queen or a goddess or a deity. No, just like Jezebel, her time is coming up. And the spirit of the, the, the woman who rides the beast, which is Satan, is going to come to an end. And the beast is going to be thrown into the lake of fire. Justice is going to prevail. Having in her hand a golden cup of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. She's created sin, and sin is now the new norm. Remember back to Sodom and Gomorrah, as Jesus said, it would be like the days of Lot and the days of Noah. Days of Lot were Sodom and Gomorrah. It wasn't so much that the sin and sexual nature was out of control. We see more of that in the book of Yasser, how deep and corrupt it was. 
The judges were so corrupt and the sexual immorality of the city of Sodom and Gomorrah was out of control. The same thing happened in the days of Noah. That's where God locked the, the door up for Noah and his three sons and their wives and, and Noah's wives with, with the animals to cleanse the earth of this fornication. He's cleansing the earth with a fire judgment. This is the last cleansing of the earth and the earth ages over and those who have uh, chose Jesus Christ with their heart, their soul, and their mind are going to enter in a millennial reign with the Christ, the Messiah. So this is the final judgment coming. But in those days, it's not so much that the sin, it was that the, that the, the morality of the people became the new norm. That Sodom and Gomorrah and the judges were corrupt and the people were corrupt and their morals were corrupt. Doesn't that sound like the United States of America today? Morals are gone. Things that they do to our to, to politicians you know, politicians going out and saying, go and threaten these people in this administration and cabinet and scare them and chase them out of restaurants and, and just intimidate them. Boy, that, that's definitely not the love of Christ. Uh, taking the newborn for, uh, for, for, uh, for no reason, that's like the day of Moloch. Uh, having abortion on demand, a million aborted fetuses already this year. It's just, it's become the new norm. And you get people who, who, who put up sign. I saw a sign the other day. This woman put up a sign. She says, I am so proud of my abortion. You can't stick your finger up at God any more than that. He loves life. Life is him. And that child will live on forever with God. But there is going to be the wrath. What the point is, is that society caves into their morality. They have no moral compass anymore. And the things are, are, are welcome. Today, that's the way it is in the United States. It is welcome. It is the new norm. It is, you know, the Bible's outdated. Heck with this, heck with that. I don't like this. We're going to do a special presentation to the church on, on Republicans and Democrats based on the platforms of each, each particular party. And we're going to ask you a true truth. Can you be a Christian based on what this particular party says? And you're going to have to answer yourself. And there's no, there, there's no escape, there's no loophole. Either you're following God's word or you're not, period. And we're gonna call that out because under this platform, you can't be, it's impossible. And if you think you are, you're fooled. Satan's fooled you because you don't have the love of Christ in you. So this woman is full of that. And that's where our society is getting today that there's no question we're in the day of the Lord. The imminent return of the Messiah because our, 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 um, our moral compass is shot. But the Lord's going to give us one more revival. On her forehead was a name written, uh, ba Mystery Babylon, the great mother of the harlots and the ab abomination of the earth. She's Mystery Babylon, the great, the, the mother of all of harlots and the abomination of the earth. This is the spirit of Satan. This is the spirit of Jezebel, the spirit that drove man away from God. And the spirit and Satan and the false prophet are all going to become to fruition. It is going to scales of justice. The good news is we have a Supreme Court, not the United States of America. I mean, I just saw this, this Supreme Court ruling in today in favor of the of, of the travel ban, and I shook my head. I thought, how in, how could it be five to four? How could it be that close when the, when the law is the law? That's where we're at. It's depending on what kind of judge you get today, whatever their ideology is what they will vote. They're not voting with the law. And the law that we have that conquers all law is God's precepts and commandments. And he gives us this word. So it will go well with us. He gives us this to be obedient. I was giving a Bible study to my son yesterday to get him to learn more about the Bible and have the Holy Spirit take over in him. And uh, it, it, he was amazed at how many times it went over and over and over that Jesus says, if you love me, you're going to obey me. If you love me, you're going to obey my commandments. Half, I would say 80% of the church, 80 of the church is either blotted that out of their Bible or they don't read their Bible or they don't care. You can't love Christ and not be obedient to him. So we're going to have to call out the so-called churches. How can you be a church in the United States Presbyterian Church today and say, Israel doesn't belong in the land? <laughs> you're, I would get out of that church as fast as I possibly could, one, for my spiritual, what was my spiritual growth, but you never know what's coming down on that particular church. God said in the end days he would shake up the church, to the church and the fake church. You're seeing so many church scandals. As we mentioned in one of our updates, every single major denomination now has come out with some kind of heresy, at least one, against God's precepts and commandments. And you just shake your head. How do they have that much time in their hand to come up with these precepts and, or these comes up with these rules 
that are against God's word. It's because they're listening to man. They're not listening to the word of the Lord, all 66 books. So I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints. She, she had the blood on her hands as, as Jezebel had the blood out of her hands with the Baal prophets and the Asherah prophets until Elijah rained down. And even then, after seeing a miracle that the 850 uh, Asherah and, and Baal prophets of Jezebel were br brought down with fire judgment, which will be the end here, she still had a hardness and still chased Elijah. That's the spirit of evil. That's the spirit that will never quit and they're never going to give in because they have a hardened heart and it doesn't matter. They're going to they're be evil until the last breath. I saw a woman drunk with the blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. Just marvel, not as, oh, I look at her. It's just a great amazement. And I look at this as a great amazement too. Not that she's amazing, it's just amazing to me how somebody can be so vile against God. And when I see some of these things on Twitter and I see these things on Facebook and I see people say they're Christians and they do these vile things in, out of politics, chasing 12-year-old uh, son of the president, threatening the president's son's kids, it is absolutely disgusting. These movie stars who think they're all that in the back. I would not take advice on from any movie star. They're a movie star. They're acting. They're actors. That's what they're paid to do. They act. They're faking it. They're acting. They're not being real. So why would you listen to them for anything that has to do with anything in life? And now they're becoming so vile because of the spirit of Jezebel. Satan knows his time is short. So he's shaking up the spirit of Jezebel like no other time. We are in the days of Lot and we are in the days of Noah, exactly the way Jesus said it would happen. But we have one more great harvest, one more great, great revival. And she has the blood. So he's going back in amazement how these people can be so hardened against God. And knowing God is God, and they still are going to go down with that hardened heart. It just makes you go, oh. When we get a little further peeking up, that in the millennial reign of Jesus Christ at the end, uh, Satan is let loose for a season, as the scripture tells us. And People who live through the millennial reign with Christ on earth, they're going to be some that are fooled because they, they still have the sin nature in them. They, had, they don't have their glorified bodies yet. They were, they were, they're called the earth dwellers that made it through the tribulation and they procreated for a thousand years. And they will turn to Satan. You just shake your head. How? How can that be right? you got to get your heart straight. You've got to get your heart on what's truth. And the truth is the word of God. So she literally got drunk on the blood of the martyrs and the saints because Satan was behind her to destroy all God's martyrs and all God's saints because it's vile. Satan has hated man ever since God says, I will create man in our image in the English and the image of Elohim in the Hebrew and the image of the three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise his name. I saw a woman drunk, but the angel said to me, why did you marvel? I tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast that carries her, which has seven heads and seven horns. Seven is the number of completion. So this will be the completion of the heads of the nation. And the 10 is the number of precept and commandment of authority. So this is exactly, they'll have authority, but this is God's uh, precept and commandment. Under the 10 commandments or the precepts and commandments, uh, if you're obedient, it will go well with you. If you're disobedient, there is a judgment. And we're going to see an ultimate judgment to the lake of fire coming soon uh, to the uh, false prophet and the uh, the beast, the, the Antichrist. will be thrown into the lake of fire. Satan will go into Sheol for a thousand years. And at the end of the thousand year reign, Christ will open up the white throne judgment. And then earth will be settled once and for all. So they know where their home is going to be. And the beast that you saw is not and ascended out of the bottomless pit to go to perdition. So we will be thrown into the lake of fire. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. Whoa, what does that mean? Here we go on. So he was and is not, but yet is. It means he's never going to die. He's in the lake of fire. Eternal life works both ways. Eternal life, when you die, when your flesh dies, based on the, the, the condition of your heart, if you accepted Jesus Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior, that's what's going to uh, show you where your eternal address is going to be. If you love the Lord Jesus Christ and you accept him in your heart and you're honoring him with his precepts and commandments, because you can't love him without honoring his precepts and commandments. And as my son said, how many of them? All of them. He didn't say just 
this little bit or tithe them, 10 part, 10 part. It's all of them. you got to be obedient to all of them. Uh, so that's where your eternal address is going to be. You'll be either home with, with Jesus the Father and the Holy Spirit, or you will be into the lake of fire, but it's eternal. People think they can escape the world through death. Death is the beginning. But the question you've got to ask yourself, the beginning of what? Is it the beginning of eternal life and damnation? Or is it the beginning of eternal life with love, peace, joy? <laughs> you've you got two choices, love, peace, joy, or damnation. It's not a hard choice, but you know what? We're being fooled by the evil one. He doesn't care. He wants to destroy man. And we're seeing it. He's using this literally in the end times. Also says that the, are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Meaning God in the, war, in, in the beginning, when he created man in his image, as Jesus said, I wouldn't, I'll go away and i build a house for you. God had every name written in the, in the book of life. And it was up to you to choose to stay in the book of life as we see closer when, the name, when we look at what Jesus does at the white throne judgment. It says their names removed from the Lamb's book of life. You've got to read it in the Greek. It says the names were removed from the Lamb's book of life, from the foundation of the world. So from the foundation of the world, God's intention, God the Father, the Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, their intention was everyone would love him and they would, they would be in his house forever and be in his love, peace, joy. And we see when Jesus opens up the white throne judgment, they chose to remove their name from the Lamb Book of Life. They chose. So if you were once in something or you were removed from something means you were originally in there. You chose your destination, which was from the foundation of the world based on your heart condition. How does God know? Because God knows the beginning and the end. He already knows what you're going to choose. He knows every single one of us on this broadcast today what we're going to choose and what we're going to do for his purpose and his glory, or what we're not going to do for his purpose and his glory. He knows the beginning and the end, but we have free will. Here is, here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are the seven mountains on the which the woman sits. The seven mountains. Seven mountains represent seven governments, and some say seven literal mountains. I believe it was Hal Lindsey that said the seven mountains that are in Rome, that the Vatican would be part of this. Uh, there's some to that. We will uh, explain this, but they're talking about seven uh, uh, mountains are always a, a government and it can literally mean a mountain range as well, but it's the completion of the governments. This is on what the woman sits. This is where she gets her authority. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen. One is the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. And then we know the beast will be the eighth. So what are the seven? We know that there was Egypt was the first world power. Then the Assyrians took it. Then the Babylonians under Nebuchadnezzar. Then the Medes and Persians. And then Alexander the Great was Greece. So that was the, uh, that was the five. Then we know Rome. Rome never was destroyed. It dispersed. It dispersed into two legs, as Daniel says. There's the Western and the Eastern. Uh, Constantinople, which is in Turkey, uh, later came on to be a, a ruling of the Ottoman Empire. Um, so the seventh people debate on who the seventh's going to be. The one that is, is Rome, because this is when John wrote this. Rome was in power at that particular time. So Rome, again, split into two, an Eastern and a Western. And you now know, you see that one is a very strong Muslim. And Aragon, yesterday, the president of Turkey, was just reelected. He's trying to reestablish the Ottoman Empire and get a conglomerate of Muslims to come against Israel. He just said that two weeks ago. He wants to get a conglomerate to come against Israel. So in my opinion, and I believe Wally Chobot said the same thing, I believe that the seventh that he's referring to is a reestablishment of the Ottoman Empire and a conglomerate of Muslim nations coming against God's uh, anointed city and state of Israel and the city of Jerusalem. Uh, the beast that was not, and this is not himself, also the eighth. So he is the eighth, and he is of the seven. Means the son of perdition will literally have ties to all the other seven kingdoms. We know from the Old Testament that the, the Antichrist will be the, is called the son of perdition. He will be an Assyrian. And most of these nations crossed over each other. So they will, you'll have a tie of all of them. That's why it says, literally, in the book of Daniel, at the end, they all come back and Jesus will destroy them. All the nations will fall. That once was our, and will be again. Jesus will take all the kingdom nations. Why do they sit and plot a bang and thing? It goes back to King David in Psalm 2. Why do the nations rage? Why do the kings rage? 
Why, why, why do they plot a vain thing? Why do they go against his anointed one, meaning the Messiah? He who sits in the heaven laughs. He will hold them in per, perdition. He will hold it. He will do it. It's showing what the kingdoms of the world. This is the history of the world. And the history of the world is coming to completion here with a woman on the be the woman riding the beast, the great city Babylon. And I believe it'll also be a literal woman who will be of some type of power working in the demonic trinity as well. You're seeing women being used in Muslim nations for the first time ever. Just yesterday, or I think it was just yesterday, uh, Saudi Arabia uh, is allowing women to drive. That's historical now. Uh, and it's just my conjecture that there will be, not only does that mean a symbol of, of Babylon, but it also, I believe, will be a literal woman that will be uh, have power and be used by the by, by the, the the Antichrist, uh, Satan, and the false prophet. So uh, he's at the seven and is going into perdition. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings, who have received no kingdom yet, but they will receive authority for one hour as the kings with the beast. So for one hour they will create create havoc. They will have authority as kings in the last day. People would always speculate, who are these 10 kings that are going to be and who are, who are they? It doesn't matter. I mean, you can speculate all you want. It doesn't matter. point is, you know it's going to happen. You know it's 10. It's number of precepts, commandments, and, uh, and the judgment is coming. These are of one mind that will give their power and authority to the beast. They can come together with the, with the beast, the Antichrist, to try to destroy the world and, and have Satan destroy every man. And he's going down in a flame. And evil will come upon evil. Remember what Jesus said in the Gospels? When you read this the first time, you, you read it. I, I mean, I read it. I've, I've read the Bible so many, many, many times. The Gospels just a gazillion times. And it wasn't until a couple months ago, that, uh, maybe about six months ago, that really stuck with me. I got something what Jesus said. He says, if Satan's against himself, his house will fold. His, if a house is divided, if Satan is, is driving out demons in the name of Beelzebub, Beelzebub being Satan, Satan would be divided and his house will fall. His house is going to fall. And evil will literally eat evil. I never caught that the many times it went through there. You know, we know at the end Satan's house will be divided and they will turn against each other and devour each other into the lake of fire and to death, the second death forever. Because his house is divided and his house will never stand. Only the house of God will stand through the sun, the lamb. These are one mind that give power and authority to the beast. These will make war with the lamb, the lamb of God, the war, a war of all wars. Imagine the war of these knucklehead 10 kings with a beast and the harlot trying to come against the lamb of God, the king of kings, the Lord of hosts, the author of the word. It, it's, 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 that's just how bad it is to see the vileness of the world today. So in uh, the, the lamb and the and the lamb overcome them for he is Kairos of lords Kairos of Kairos and king of kings and those who are with him are called chosen and faithful we were chosen because he knew what we had picked with our hearts before the foundation of the earth he chose us some he chose that he denied that their names are not written in the lamb's book of life they removed themselves but you're chosen if you love the Lord, your, your God, with all your heart and your soul. But what does he say we have to be? Faithful. How do you be faithful? You can't have faith without love. You can't have love without obedience. And you can't be faithful without loving God, knowing his word, knowing his truth, and knowing what he says is true. Well, if you don't know his word, how can you be faithful? And if you're not obeying his word, how can you be faithful? You can't be faithful and be disobedient. Faith is trusting something you don't see. Faith means that you love him so much and you're obedient to him that you know what he says is truth. And he's a loving God and he's a holy God and he cannot go against his word. But you gotta know his word. That's him. That's who he is. He's saying, come see me. Meet me here in the holy of holies, your heart. Know my word. It will set you free, literally. So chosen and, fa uh, chosen and faithful. Then he said to me, the waters which you saw where the harlot sits are the people, multitude, nations, and tongues. All the signs of the nations and tongues. This is coming to the completion of the earth age. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, those will hate the harlot. They'll turn against each other. Oh, Satan against Satan, the house divided, will turn. 
We see that in Ezekiel 38 and 39 war. All of a sudden, this conglomerate of Muslim nations that we see today, they turn on each other. This is a spirit of confusion. Like God did it to the first Antichrist, the Tower of Babel. Babel! He changed their language and they confused and they start fighting each other. And they got confused and he scattered them all over the world. That's why we have every tribe, tongue, and nation. And it doesn't matter your tribe, tongue, or nation. It means the condition of your heart. It doesn't matter the color of your skin or what you speak or how you speak. It's the love that you have in the heart, which is bleeds of scarlet, red, for the most high God through his son, Jesus Christ. And that's the, the way, the truth, and the life. And we all become sons and daughters of the most high God if we choose him with our heart. Praise his name. So they, the, these will hate the harlot, make her desolate and naked, and eat her flesh and burn her with fire. This is literal. They turn against each other. All through the Old Testament, the Lord's telling us where, where, where they'll, and even in the New Testament, that the birds of the air, birds of the air, again, are an idiom of Satan. When you see a bird that is generic, that's Satan. So when you see the parable of the mustard seed with Jesus Christ, that means Satan's number one goal has always been to take demonic inside the church. The parable of the mustard seed is the church. And the, and the birds of the air come in and they branch. Well, you're probably taught in Sunday school, oh, that's a nice, loving thing. The birds are nice and they're inside the church. No, that's evil. Satan is trying to attack the church from the beginning of time from within, and we see it today. Every denomination has come up with at least one heresy. People are denying the Most High God in the church and calling themselves Christians. Just because you sit in a building does not mean you are of Christ. The only way you're of Christ is a love relationship and be obedient to all his word. That's truth. So we got to know what truth is. Remember Jesus said even the elect would be fooled if it were possible. I always wondered that when I was starting to read the Bible. I said, how could people be so fooled? What, what is this? Because I was, had this stereotype when I was a little kid in Bible study, uh, son, uh, vacation Bible school. That here's, here's God and here's Satan and there's this big battle of superpowers and God is good and Satan is evil. Oh, couldn't be further from the truth. God is God. God created Satan. He is the creator of all things. And Satan's only thing he can do is fool you. And I start getting closer in the word of God and closer and closer and I see all these people who think they're Christians and they're not saved. Just because they go into a building and say, I'm of X denomination, my, my father says I'm saved. No, you're not. Well, I was sitting in a, I was sitting in a funeral of a loved one, and he got and he hadn't the loved one that passed away hadn't been in that particular church for thirty years and hadn't talked to him in thirty years married him thirty years ago, and says yeah it's a great day uh, I can assure you so and so is in heaven today, what how can you assure him that he's you haven't even seen him in thirty years you're a man how do you know the condition of his heart you just told every single family member of him that all you have to do is be of this denomination and sit in this building and you'll be where he is. That's false teaching and it needs to be called out because we're talking about eternal lives on the line. You don't lie to people. You tell them truth because the truth is the only thing that can set us free. The only thing that can set us free. So they're turning against each other, eating the flesh and burning and the birds uh, all through the scripture will eat the flesh of the, of the fallen dead. Again, what Jesus said, Satan against himself. They, his house will fall and they will turn on each other, literally. For God has put, or Theos has put into their hearts to fulfill his purpose. God's purpose is being fulfilled. Where his son will come in and reign for a thousand years to fulfill the Abrahamic covenant and the Davidic covenant that Gabriel gave to Mary. In the New, in the New Testament, even for you denominations that say don't read the Old Testament, which is blasphemy, Gabriel said it to Mary. Mary, you are blessed. You're just a woman, Mary, but you are blessed. You will be a saint, Mary, just like all those who love the Lord Jesus Christ will be saints as well. And you will, uh, you will have the son of the most high God. Whoa, he'll be of the Holy Spirit. He will be of his father, David, and his kingdom will never end, meaning he will be the king of kings, Lord of hosts, reigning in Jerusalem, just like the scripture said fulfilling the Davidic covenant for a thousand years and then for eternity. And then it goes on to say, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. Well, who is Jacob? Jacob is Israel and the 12 tribes, the literal nation. Remember, Jesus is a kinsman redeemer. What does a kinsman redeemer do? You need to know this from the book of Ruth. You need to know this from the Old Testament. 
a kinsman redeemer as a Boaz. Boaz was a kinsman redeemer who had a dual covenant. He redeemed the Gentile bride, Ruth. That is the church. And he redeemed the land, Naomi, which is Israel, a dual covenant, one Messiah. And he is the Goel. He is the, 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 the avenger of blood. And he avenged our blood for us on the cross. And he's avenging the blood of the evil ones by themselves, picking at each other until the second death. He is fulfilling all of that. So how can you be a, a denomination that says Israel does not have a right to its own land of Jerusalem? You don't know your Bible. And you're following a man and a man-made doctrine, a man-made denomination, and get away from it for your own spiritual well-being because we care about your internal life. You want a doctor, to, you're going to go to the doctor and the doctor sees a great huge tumor and says, looks good, keep feeding me money, come back another six months, it's okay. Or do you want a doctor to tell you the truth? You've got a tumor and we got to do something about it today because your life is on the line. Well, it's not your, your, your fleshly life that's on the line, it's your eternal life's on the line. We need to be eternity planners, which planning your eternity. Where is your eternity going to be if you go out today? Is it with the Lord Jesus Christ? And the only way it can be through the Lord Jesus Christ is through a love relationship with him and be obedient to him and get into his word. It's not because you're sitting in a building. That's an activity. You might as well go and sit in the YMCA. At least you're going to see more activity and more truth probably than what the itchy ear preachers are teaching you. Not enough are teaching truth. The truth is the only thing that can set us free. And we want to know truth. We want to know we have a heart condition and we need to be cleansed and we need to be cured. For God has put in their hearts to fulfill the purpose to the one of mine, to give their kingdom of the beast until the words, the words of uh, Theos are fulfilled. The words are fulfilled. Remember, Jesus is coming and speak it, and it's done. Going back to the woman that rides the beast, um, she is of the great, she's a symbol of the great city of, uh, of, of Babylon. Uh, the woman who rides the beast, the great harlot of Babylon, Babylon. Uh, many scholars uh, believe you know, Roman and the Vatican will be a part of that. We, we see the Pope has uh, created many, many heresies. Matter of fact, uh, there's three sections within the Catholic Church are against the Pope already. Uh, you split into four different types of doctrine inside the Catholic Church. There's major uproar in the, inside the Catholic Church. However, there's some good that's coming out of that. There's a remnant inside the Catholic Church that's growing eight times faster than the rest of the Catholic Church, and they're trusting the Word of God. And that's what we're supposed to do. So God bless them that they raise and walk. And you can call yourself a Baptist or you can call yourself a Catholic. You can be a, a denomination. There's nothing wrong with denomination unless it's steering you away from truth. This is the only way that we know truth. What did Paul say? Paul said in Acts 17, 11, the Bereans were much more noble than the Thessalonians. Why? Because they listened to this, what Paul said with an open heart. They didn't close their ears because they had tradition of a church false traditions that came from pagan ways. They listened to what he said, but what did it, what's it say next? But they checked the scriptures daily to see what Paul said was true. They were, they were verifying the word that Paul was saying with the word of God every day. That's why Jesus says, this is your daily bread. This is your day, I am the, the living water. That's why it's daily. It has to be done daily. It's more important to be in the word of God than physically eat or drink. Praise his name. We need to know truth. Uh, the, 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 back to the Vatican, um, many scholars over the years said that the Vatican would be part of the, uh, the Pope, maybe the, uh, the, the false prophet. There was a uh, prophecy was inside the Catholic Church that believed that. There's a lot inside the Catholic Church that believe that as well. But Rome has, oh, there's, there's a book called by David Hunt, which is a very great book. Now, people will, before they read this book, they think it's a hit piece on the Catholic Church. It was actually written, all the notes that David Hunt got for this book, it's called A Woman Who Rides the Beast. All the notes and document, doc, uh, documents that he got for this book were from people with inside the Catholic Church. So it was basically written by the Catholic Church. If you look at his footnotes, they all come from the Catholic Church. And uh, he, they, they call the woman who rides the beast the, the spirit of the false prophet and in, in, in going back to the Vatican and Rome. What's very fascinating about that is that the scandals throughout the church from the, from, from the beginning in the Roman Catholic Church and how uh, perverse it's been and has been and has continued to be. But it was, they were, in those days, it was called uh, Little Babylon, modern-day Babylon. 
people would say Babylon and they would refer to Rome. So there could be a dual purpose meaning behind that. No doubt in my mind, you see Jeremiah and you see Isaiah, there will be a literal Babylon in Babylon today. We've mentioned that the Ayatollah, Ayatollah of Iran, who is trying to reestablish establish the Persian empire, they believe if they create a jihad, that their 12th Mahadi, their equivalent of their Christ to come down, which Walid Shobat believes that is the Antichrist that they're hoping to come down. So they're trying to reestablish a modern day Babylon. They want that to be their capital of their new Persia or Iran, Babylon. So Babylon, if you Google it, is being rebuilt and rebuilt and rebuilt. There's a modern day Babylon. I mentioned on one of our other studies, there is a rumor uh, and there is a building that the United Nations, if they moved out of New York City, would move to Babylon. And there is a building that they would house it. They found the Tower of Babel. They found the handwriting on the wall of the Medes and Persians. Uh, the United States military was housed in that. And it's blossoming. They're putting a lot of money in the literal uh, city of Babylon. So it, it will be a literal Babylon. There will be the spirit of the Antichrist. There will be a spirit of a literal woman. And it also could mean a partnership with what is called by David Hunt and many inside the Catholic Church, Rome as a Babylon, as a type of Babylon. They're called a modern day Babylon is what the book says. So, and the woman who saw is the great city which reigns over the kings of the earth, the great city of Babylon, but also could mean Rome as well combined too. The bottom line is you, you're gonna get fooled unless you know the word of God. And I don't, don't listen to man, you listen to God. Don't listen to me. Listen to God. Listen to God's word because he is true. Your entire life of eternal life depends on what you choose in your heart. And that's, that's major. That's major. Eternity is a long time. Eternity, the clock doesn't stop. We don't get rest when we die. <laughs> you know, you, you see this, oh, rest in peace. There's no such thing as rest in peace if you're away from the Lord. There's no rest in peace. And there's no rest. I mean, we will be in peace with God the Father, but we're not resting. We're in his glory, his kingdom glory of love, peace, joy. We'll never wear out. We'll never get tired. And we will be in a shalom forever. We pray that Revelation 17 has been a blessing to you. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the Apostle John bless you today and always. God bless you.